If we're going to fundamentally change the fortunes of the industry, we have to do things differently. Digital mining is going to be something we'll see a lot more of. And let's try and understand briefly, what does it really mean? It means that essentially you're going to have enough information real time to understand what's happening right now in your whole mining value chain. Where are your people underground or on surface? Where is your fleet? What's the status of that fleet? You can feed that information back immediately and take action. That can be a big step change in improving productivity. New mines should be built so that they can be very flexible to changing requirements. They can be agile to changing demands. Because often mines we built in the past have a large fixed cost structure and they are not adaptable to changes in volume. We're going to have to build mines that are going to be different to that. Conventional mining is going to disappear over time, even though it's going to have a short-term impact on jobs. But I think we have to deal with that in different ways. And we need to create a more safe environment by moving to mechanization and even beyond that to automation. Low-grade ore bodies, look at the inventory ahead of you. It's probably about 0.8 grams a ton. You're going to have to find ways to make that work. And some of those ore bodies are more complex in terms of their metallurgy as well. Energy and water are going to become scarce resources. I think, as we all know, energy, water, and food are going to be scarce resources into the future. We've got to use them better. Let's start first in the value chain of mining with exploration. If we're going to find new ore bodies of the future, we have to do something different because the size and the quality of our discoveries is declining. All bodies are getting deeper and are harder to detect. They're undercover. You don't necessarily pick them up through the normal Aramag surveys. Cost of exploration is increasing. It's one of the first things that get cut by gold mining companies when things get tough. And it's harder to find gold. You know, 10 years ago, if you said gold is becoming scarce in the mining industry, people would have said you're crazy. It's actually getting harder to find gold around the world. And the reason we know that is because all the gold companies are hunting in the same spaces, which tells you they're struggling to find new frontiers. How do we do this? Well, we can use techniques that are already available today but not extensively used. Airborne gravimetry, for example. Just by using electromag surveys from an airborne platform, you can very quickly get a much better coverage and depth over a period that's much larger than through conventional techniques. 3D seismic surveys can give you good resolution of structures. By having these machines on surface that send seismic waves into the earth, they can actually help you plot the structure of the geology. And then being able to drill holes in all different directions. That can really help when ore bodies are different in shape, narrow ore bodies, flatter ore bodies. So these kind of things can be used to give you an edge in exploration and give you the best possible chance to find new things. Let's look at mining and extraction, for the next level in the value chain. And here I think the challenges are pretty well known. Mining depth is increasing. Ore bodies in the old days used to be nice and fat and easy to mine. I mean, if you didn't mine too cleverly, you know, you could still get nice grades into the plant. Now they're getting narrower, they're getting deeper. Safety is a big concern, always has been, but particularly with these kind of ore bodies. You've got to mine more volume to get the same gold with the grade that's declining. Operations are becoming more remote. I know in Australia we have challenges with what we call FIFO, uh, fly in, fly out, where uh, employees are sometimes away for seven days, back home for six. Not easy. Labor costs and electricity costs, as we all know, are going up throughout the world. So these are the challenges as we try and maintain and improve our mining costs. So how do we deal with this? Well, one of the ways we can do so is getting better information and using it. I think it's fair to say that there's been a plethora of increased information that's come through from multiple sources. But how do you take that data and make use of it and turn it into information that in turn can drive improved knowledge about your ore bodies and then channel that into changes in what you do? And certainly with IT applications today, we're pretty data rich in the information we're getting. We're just not using a lot of it. So let's start using it. Geographic information systems, which uses a multiple of sources, 
to gather information about your leases, about where uh, particular areas of the, the lease have boundaries, where you want to get borehole information, and it's going to help you in your mine planning and also in your geotechnical controls. And it's information that you can get pretty quickly and feedback. Advanced mine planning, going down to the lowest level possible, understanding the interdependencies. And often when you do a mine plan, we don't understand the interdependencies. For example, if we don't understand whether we have sufficient uh, conveying capacity on a different level of the mine underground, uh, we may not actually be able to achieve our plan. But it means that you have to break down the information to the lowest level possible and understand all of the issues behind it. Bottlenecks, capacity constraints, inefficiencies will all be identified. That way you can actually do things differently. Real-time tracking of equipment and people, where you know where everybody is, you know where the equipment is, the status of the equipment, feeding that back real-time. The control room in a mine in the future is going to become the heart of the operation because a lot of the information will be channeled up real-time and handled remotely. Precision drilling. Now, how do we make sure that we can drill accurately and do that right down to depths of one to two kilometers? Particularly when your budgets are tight, you want to make sure that you don't drill offline because then you may not get the information you need. So there are stuff out there right now that can help us to actually drill better. In Australia, we're actually using something called Navi drilling on our mine at Agnew, which is helping us to speed up our understanding of the ore body at depth, but also doing it cheaper and getting better results. Backfilling of waste to increase extraction. A lot of you may not know, but often a lot of mines only extract maybe 50 or 60 percent of the total ore that's contained in situ in the ore body. And the reason for that is geotechnical constraints, which di dictate that you need pillars around the ore zone. If you can find a way of backfilling some of the areas you mined out, you can take some of those pillars. And we're looking at that in Australia at the moment because it's relevant to our operations into the future. Automation. Now, people are talking about mechanization. Let's go a step further. Let's talk about automation because that's the next step change that we need to be thinking about. And it's starting to happen around us in a big way. Some of the other stuff that we're going to be looking at in the mining industry, and it's really going to be happening fast over the next two or three years, in-pit crushing and conveying. That's a much easier way of actually sorting out the waste from the ore and reducing the cost of transporting it instead of trucking it. You convey it quicker, cheaper. You get the ore into the plant quicker. Remote hauling trucks and loaders. Now, one of the things that's happening in Australia right now is hauling trucks are being operated remotely. It's starting to explode. Loaders are being operated remotely. Artificial intelligence and robots are coming. I think all of us are doing bits and pieces of work around this but it's developing at a hell of a pace. Now, I think we can learn from the military here. The military around the world has done a lot of work on this for obvious reasons, um, but we can learn from them, and we are. And so there's a lot of developments going on right now with the universities that have helped them around the world. So lots of other underground technologies too. Raised boring, remote pillar mining, where you can't put people in because of safety issues. And you know, the, I think the real dream of mining, if you can get it to work, is block caving. It really represents the mine of the future, where you don't have to blast it. All you have to do is let it break. It's captured in draw points in the bottom of the mine, and you transport it by truck out of the mine. It really is the mine of the future. Yeah.